Of all the countries in the world, could this one wind up with the most expensive dinner? And welcome back to Cliffy Land. This is week in country number 157 on our second attempt of cooking food of every single country in the world. And tonight, over to the nation of Slovenia. Slovenia, located in South Central Europe, it has land borders with Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Croatia. It's on the Adriatic Sea, and its food is super delicious. It is influenced by all its different neighbors, Italian food, Austrian food, even German food, and Mediterranean food, and the old Ottoman Empire as well. There's about 22 different distinct cuisines across this small country, which is kind of crazy considering the size of the country, but the food is really delicious. And you can find a lot of different dishes there which are traditional one-pot dishes, and a lot of soups have like over a hundred different soups. And there's a number of different dishes involving pork, and uh, sometimes poultry, and a number of different game fowl as well. And this all kind of factored into how we dealt with all this last time, so let's take a look and see how things went when we tried things then. Well, four years ago on the Global Cooking Challenge, I had the difficulty of having to narrow down the options and I had that limitation. The same one that I faced last week in Slovakia, that is that the better half had exactly one veto of all the food of the world and that was sauerkraut. And since pork is such a big deal here, all the pork dishes also involved sauerkraut. So I had to work my way around that. Plus all the neighboring countries and nearby countries, I'd done similar versions of certain dishes. So I didn't want to repeat those, even though I kind of did. So what I wound up doing is cooking across three nights. And the first night I made two dishes. The first one I made a Slovenian goulash. Now that was super delicious. I loved it. It took a long time. Check out that recipe. It's really good. The problem with that is that goulash really is a Hungarian dish. My Hungarian friends even told me that and I know it's just I didn't get to do a goulash for Hungary when I cooked Hungary, and so that's why I did that. So we're not doing that this time. Now we served that with a dandelion salad, which is very traditional to Slovenia, and that was okay. The dandelion greens were a new thing on me. They tasted okay. I just didn't understand how they went with the potatoes. So we're not doing that tonight. Now, neither are we doing what we did on the second night, which is a meat pie. It's kind of a rolled up snake of a dish. Uh, the filling cooks inside. It didn't taste really great, partially because I didn't understand uh, about the cooking it inside the thing. It didn't taste quite right. Now that's very similar to something we cooked for the nation of Georgia and if I'm not mistaken there's some Central Asian country coming up in the teas that had one of those too. So not wanting to repeat that again, you know, I passed on that for this time. What we are doing is what we did here on the third night which is a rare beef dish which is a phenomenally expensive one and it's a beef braised in Barolo. Barolo being a fancy Piedmont wine which is uh, kind of pricey and it uses a big pricey hunk of meat too. But that was mm, really delicious and we served that with a Slovenian dumplings. Now last time around they didn't taste really great and they certainly didn't look really great. I had zero experience in doing them and they didn't look right at all. They're supposed to look like little purses. So we're going to try to fix that this time because last time the recipe was super sketchy and I'd never done it before and this time I did a little more investigating, found some more recipes and some more guidance so hopefully that's going to work out okay. So let's see what go into those two dishes. First, for our beef braised in Barolo, we'll need a quarter cup of olive oil, one three pound boneless beef chuck roast, patted dry, three teaspoons of kosher salt, one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, a quarter cup of chopped pancetta or bacon, two cups of chopped yellow onions, one cup of chopped carrots, one cup of chopped celery, one tablespoon of minced garlic, one and a half bottles of Barolo, or another dry Piedmont red wine such as Dolcetto or Barbera, two to three cups of beef stock, four whole cloves, two sprigs of rosemary, two bay leaves, one cinnamon stick, and a quarter cup of chopped fresh parsley for garnish. And then for our Slovenian dumplings we'll need, for the dough, about nine ounces of white flour, two eggs, about a tablespoon of oil, a splash of milk, a pinch of salt, and probably about a quarter cup of water. 
For the potato stuffing, 17 ounces of potatoes, 2 ounces of smoked bacon, 1 chopped onion, and you can also add marjoram, we have 1 teaspoon here, and or chives. Wowzers, that looks like it's going to be really good. Let's get cooking! Heat the oil in a Dutch oven over medium-high heat. Sprinkle the beef with salt and pepper. Add the beef to the Dutch oven and brown on all sides. Remove the beef and reserve it to a plate. Now we should have rendered the bacon here, but things got confused. Add in the onions, carrots, celery, and cook until softened. Here's where we realized we left out the bacon and added it late. So we let the fat render while the onions caramelized. That whole process taking about 15 minutes or more. Then add in the garlic and cook until fragrant, about 30 seconds. Add the beef back in. Add the bottle and a half of wine. Add beef stock to cover. Add the cloves, rosemary, bay leaves, and cinnamon stick, and bring it to a boil. Then reduce the heat to medium low, cover and simmer until the meat is tender, about two and a half hours, occasionally turning the meat and skimming any foam that comes to the surface. Remove the meat from the pot, place the meat on a cutting board and cover with foil and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Strain the sauce into a saucepan and place it over high heat. Cook until the sauce is reduced to a consistency thick enough to coat the back of a spoon, about 10 minutes. Cut the meat across the grain into pieces a quarter inch thick. To the flour add eggs, milk, salt, and work it into a dough. Knead it for at least 10 minutes. Cover with plastic wrap and let it rest for at least 30 minutes. Peel and add the potatoes to a pot of hot water. Bring to a boil and let cook until soft enough to mash, about 30 minutes. Remove from the pot and let it cool. Heat the oil in a skillet over medium-high heat. Add the chopped bacon and render the fat for about 5 minutes. Add the onions and saute until the onions are browned, about 10 to 15 minutes. Once the potatoes have cooled, mash with the potato masher, fork, or ricer. Add in the onions and bacon, mix well, and mix in the marjoram and or chives if using. Roll the potato mixture into small marble-sized bowls and place them on a parchment paper lined tray spaced apart. Continue until the mixture is used up. Roll the dough thinly into a flat rectangle, this is a lot easier with a pasta machine, and place small balls of the stuffing 3 centimeters from the edge in a line. Fold over the dough, carefully roll the dough over again, cut the spaces between the balls with a knife, cut the tops and seal each of the dumplings with your fingers. Lay each one sideways and press the ears together. Press the dimple down on the top part of the dumplings and space them on a tray. Bring a pot of salted water to a boil, drop in the dumplings one serving at a time, and boil until they float to the top. Remove and keep warm. Plate servings of the meat, plate the dumplings, drizzle on the sauce, and dress with parsley and serve. It was absolutely out of this world for the most part. Let's take those one at a time. Let's start off with those dumplings. Now this time I've made the dumplings more than once and I did look into that recipe. So they did look more like they're supposed to, like little purses. Now these dumplings traditionally are made by more than one person and I'm working all by myself here. So that kind of put things back a little bit. 
Also, the recipe for the pasta wasn't a thousand percent right, but it was, you know, pretty close. It tasted really good in terms of that front. And I did have the wherewithal to know to cook the filling before boiling them, which probably helped with it. And what I didn't know was that it would take so much time. And I wound up with a lot of filling, as with every recipe I saw. It looks like you wind up with way more filling than you do have pasta. So I wound up chucking that. And I also ran out of time, so I wound up chucking like a lot of the balls that I made and some of the pasta that I made because I just didn't have the time for it. That being said, they tasted okay. Actually, they're actually not really bad. The only problem was it really felt like it needed something else on it, some kind of sauce or a cheese or something to really give it some more oomph because by itself it was sort of okay. So I'm gonna give those dumplings three out of five globes. Sure, I could improve on them if you have any kind of flavor suggestions as to what, you know, I may have done wrong, please let me know constructively in the comments. Now, uh, let's get to that beef though. That was wonderful. It was worth every penny. The wine was, you know, a lot of money. This time we did the whole bottle and a half, but the wine was really great. The sauce was really great. The beef was really tender. It had those great flavors of all the vegetables in it and uh, the rosemary and the bay leaves and the carrots and the celery and it was just so, so good and so tender and I'm really looking forward to those leftovers because I'm sure they're going to be out of this world. So that gets five out of five globes. My only complaint is I forgot to dress it with the parsley I was supposed to, but you know, it's okay. So that does it for this little stint of two weeks in Europe. Next week we head back to the islands of Oceania to have the food of the Solomon Islands. See you then. And remember, if you'd like to be advised when these videos are posted, please be sure to follow us on Periscope. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be advised when these videos are posted, and be sure to hit that bell to get those notifications. Remember, links to the original recipes can be found in the About section. If you have any thoughtful feelings or helpful suggestions about the food reading, please be sure to sound off in the comments. Thanks for watching, and happy eating!